Here in the 80s, as Georgia Tech, two wins and a loss, meets 12th ranked North Carolina. They've also won two, lost one. They're only lost by one point, the powerful Pittsburgh University. Hi, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy. Georgia Tech, trying to rebuild to the glory days of Bobby Dodd under their young coach, Bill Curry, making progress. 18 freshmen will play for Georgia Tech in this game, and everybody says they're a much better team than last year. North Carolina. When you think of North Carolina, you think of basketball. But this is quite a powerful football program here. For instance, last week they lost their starting quarterback, Elkins, with a knee injury against Army. He'd only won 22 and lost two as a starter. He will be out maybe for the season. Here's one of the great running backs of America, Kelvin Bryant, Heisman Trophy candidate, who's played very little this year because of a bad knee. And we asked Crum, the coach, what about these injuries? The effect of the injuries on our team at this time uh, have really been minimal uh, because of the depth that we have had. However, uh, much more injury, and uh, uh, it could be a very difficult situation. Uh, certainly missing Rod Elkins uh, will hurt us today, but with uh, Scott Stan Cavage, we've got an excellent young man who has started some ball games for us and uh, is not a newcomer uh, to uh, playing with some pressure on him. And, of course, uh, Ethan Horton and uh, Tyrone Anthony have done an excellent job in replacing uh, Kelvin Bryant. I think that displays the depth Carolina has. They lose a quarterback, a great running back, and their leading tackler, and they're still confident for this game. All right, we're going to be back here in Carolina after this word from your local station. Game time temperature will be 82 degrees, 49,500 here in Keenan Stadium. They've had a sellout every home game for five years. And here is the Georgia Tech team led by the Ramblin' Wreck. They spent $50,000 this year to recondition that famous car. Georgia Tech coming on the field. Two wins and a loss. Lost to Alabama, defeated Citadel, and then last week defeated Memphis State. And there's the Ram of North Carolina. And the roar starts up. Here they come, the North Carolina Tar Heels. They've won two and lost one. Working with me, Tom Gatewood, the former All-American at Notre Dame. Tom, we're going to see two clubs today that rely about 75% on the tailback carrying the ball. When you talk about a tailback at Georgia Tech, you're talking about Robert LeVette right away. A lot of speed with LeVette. He comes into the ball game with over 300 yards rushing. And last year against the, uh, the ball club, he scored, or rather had, 168 yards rushing. What about uh, the tailback for North Carolina? For North Carolina, despite all the injuries that Kelvin Bryant has had, they've got a lot of depth at the tailback spot, with uh, Horton being uh, one of the tailbacks, over 100 yards per game, and they've got uh, uh, Andre Anthony also, uh, Tyrone Anthony rather, in there over 100, about, about 85 yards a game. So we should see some furious running from that tailback spot. Now in the quarterbacking, Elkins is gone. He's been a winner for North Carolina. He's torn his knee up, and they have a replacement today for him. Dick Crum told me very frankly that he's very confident that uh, Scott Stankavich can come right in and fill up in shoes with no problem. Short passing game by Georgia Tech. Yeah, they've got uh, Jim Bob Taylor who throws about seven to eight yard range passes, but he's consistent. He's got a high percentage of completion. We're going to watch the number one ranked defense in America today in North Carolina. They stick to basics. Dick Crum has a team. He gives very, very few assignments to his defensive players. That's why they play so well. They do very well against the pass and against the run. And they can hit. All right, we're getting ready now, and we'll be back here with the opening kickoff right after this message. NCAA College Football, Georgia Tech versus North Carolina. Brought to you by Goodyear. For more Goodyears in your car, by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. And by Chevrolet, who invites you to take charge of a new Chevrolet car or truck at your Chevrolet dealers now. Georgia Tech has won the toss, and they're going to receive. 
very little breeze here in this first period. Kicking off for North Carolina will be Rob Rogers. There's Levette. They try to get the ball to him every time they can. He's going down unless he has a misfortune as one of the all-time great breaks. In this series, 10 wins for Georgia Tech, five for North Carolina, two ties. Last year, 28-7 North Carolina. Um, there's the graphics here, and Mozzie is the referee, Rex Stewart is the umpire, Elliott will be the head linesman, Booker is the line judge. We'll complete those officials for you in just a moment. We're ready for the kickoff now. And it's tumbling deep, it's going to Levette. Levette takes it on to four, he's out to the five, to the 10, 15, 20, finds a crease, and is dropped on his 26 yard line. And he's hit down there by Bramble, number 35. Jim Bob Taylor will be the quarterback. Levette's the tailback. And uh, Fortier is the fullback. The receivers will be Cantera, 82. And Mike Harrington is the split in, number two. First down. Georgia Tech, Jim Bob Taylor, engineering this club on their 26-yard line. Split backfield. He's going to pass on first down. Throws it to the sideline. He's got Kentour, and he has it. Maybe a first down. That's Chris Kentour from Tempe, Arizona. Let's take a look at the offensive line now. Gardner is the left tackle. Howell is the left guard. The center, Dean Waters, Augusta, Georgia. Mark Schultz, number 60. All-American candidate, David Lutz, big one. Right tackle. And Wisenhunt is the tight end. They're going to measure. And they have a first down, Georgia Tech, on their own 36 yard line. Jim Bob Taylor, Somerset, Texas. The pitch is to Levette, turns the corner, and they're right on him there. North Carolina has excellent pursuit, and that's Micah Moon who hit him. Let's take a look at the defense now for North Carolina. There they are up front. William Fuller, defensive tackle. The north guard is Steve Fortson. The defensive tackle is Jack Perry. The cornerbacks will be Black and James. Harris and Hendrickson are the safeties. Micah Moon and Ward are in there as the linebackers. And Tara was in motion, this is Levette. He'll get the ball a lot of times and they're keying on him already. He ran for a lot of yards as a freshman against this club last year. Hit by Mike Wilcher and Larry James, outside linebacker and left cornerback. Before that, uh, Kirk, 168 yards a year ago for Levette. So he's the workhorse of this ball. So he'll get it over 20 times in the game. Jack Perry's in there at right tackle now for North Carolina, replacing it to third down and three for Georgia Tech. No score early in the first period. Taylor will throw a whistle. Maybe too long. Oh, delay of the game, White. Legal delay of the game, took too long getting that playoff. That'll penalize them back to their 38 yard line and we'll make a third down and eight. That might change the play, Tom. You're right, but it's interesting how in that first play, in the first drive, Terry went to the pass right away with Taylor throwing the ball to Kentara, one of his uh, best receivers. They want to take it on top right away. They're not going to wait for North Carolina at all in this game. North Carolina has allowed only 44 yards rushing a game. Number two in the country on rushing defense. Number one overall, allowing total offense 169 yards a game. Oh, they're tough babies to move the ball on. Third down eight, Georgia Tech on their 38. Deep drop by Taylor. Now he guns it down the middle, right into the arm of Steve Hendrickson. Hendrickson on the interception, still going to the 45 
and into Georgia Tech territory. A bad pass over the head of the intended receiver into the arms of the free safety, Steve Hendrickson. Watch it. Taylor really pressing himself. He really doesn't have to. He's got lots of time to throw the ball. Throws it right in the arms of Steve Hendrickson, who replaced, he's a sophomore, Hendrickson. He's replaced Sammy Johnson, who was a starter a year ago, and he shows why he beat out Mr. Johnson on that play. He returned that 18 yards. There he is, Steve Hendrickson, Danville, Virginia. Here we go, first down, Carolina. And off is going to Ethan Horton, a former quarterback and a power runner. Horton will set up their backfield. Stan Cabbage is the quarterback. Ethan Horton will be the tailback. Fullback is James Jones. Mark Smith is the flanker, 45. And the split end will be Victor Harrison, number nine. On the 41-yard line of Georgia Tech, second and nine for North Carolina. No score early in the first period. Out of the eye, the pitch to Horton. Horton, oh, he's hit hard there by Dwayne Wood, number 49. To bang him down just inside the 40-yard line. The offensive line, Blados at left tackle. The All-American, Drexler at left guard. McGrews at center. Spruill, an all-conference guard, playing right guard. Joe Conwell will be at right tackle. And the tight end, Doug Sickles. Third down now. Seven. Play action pass. And it's complete to the 30-yard line to Doug Sickles, the tight end who crossed over. He's number 86. And that should give him a first down. Sickles was a backup last year. Playing like, uh, like he's got a lot of confidence in himself. And so does Stan Cavage, who really rifles the ball in there with defenders all around Sickles on the play. First down, North Carolina in the Georgia Tech 30. Tailback, Ethan Horton, driving to the 26-yard line of Georgia Tech. Here's Georgia Tech's defensive line, Diet defensive end, Burke is the nose guard, Hodge defensive end, the linebackers, Jaraz, Wood, Horton, and Jones. And Thurston, Travis, a freshman, the cornerbacks, Westbrook and Brown are the safety. Second down, six for North Carolina. On the move after intercepting the pass. Flags go down. White. This is against Georgia Tech. Might be on the nose guard. Damian Burke. Head ball. Illegal procedure. White. Illegal, Illegal procedure. Here we see. There we see Burke, number 48, jumping across the nose guard there. He made contact. That was the penalty. It is second down, a yard to go for North Carolina. On the 21-yard line of Georgia Tech, the pitch is to Horton. Horton trying to cut, and he tumbles over the 20 and reaches the 18-yard line, taken down by the strong safety, Jack Westbrook, number 22. But it's a first down for North Carolina. And we're on the Georgia Tech 18. I think Horton's been listening to his backfield coaches a little bit too much. They've been telling him to slow up a little bit, do some glide stepping, and watch your blockers before making your cuts instead of using that 4-7 speed. So far, he's been running very tentatively from that tailback spot, has not been really charging up into that line. He needs to do that a little bit more. Harrison and Smith are the wide receivers. Colson's in at fullback. First down. Smith in motion. That's Horton again. Now, he has power. He weighs 220. He was a quarterback in high school. Started here as a quarterback last year. They converted him to a running back. He runs straight up, as you notice. He gets a little more finesse to him. He's going to be something because he gets you that extra two, three, four yards every time just on totally, that effort. He's got a totally different style on LeVette. LeVette runs with body lean. He's a little shorter, but he really gets his shoulders and his head involved in his running, which Horton doesn't. That play didn't look like much, but it gained five yards for Carolina. Second and five from the 13 of Georgia Tech. Again, Horton, a big hole, touchdown! Ethan Horton for the score. <laughs> is the play of the guards, the offensive guards, particularly David Drexler, number 54, getting up the gut, finding somebody to block, clearing the way. All 
Worth has to do is open up his eyes here and watch the middle, watching that offensive line just blow people away. You've got some three-year starters on that offensive front wall for North Carolina. Well, they went 42 yards after the pass interception. Using the ground game, the kick is up. And it is good by Brooks Barwick, who does the short field goal. And we'll be back here to Keaton Stadium in North Carolina with a score. North Carolina 7 and Georgia Tech nothing. There's a new kickoff receiver, Michael Harrington. He's a split in. One of North nine North Carolina men playing on this Georgia Tech team. He's from Raleigh. He has some speed. Levette. I imagine they don't want to get him hurt now. They're behind 7-0. He received the opening kickoff. There's Bill Curry in his third year as head coach at Georgia Tech. And kicking off will be Bob Rogers. Bob Rogers. This will be a bouncer. Fumble around. Picking the ball up. There's Harrington. Harrington escapes, comes out to the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And that's a neat return. What looked like panic, Bill, they turn it into good field position where Georgia Tech will take over. That's the case of North Carolina just relaxing a little bit too much here. They're mixed up on who's going to take the ball. Harrington then picks it up and allows the Blue Jerseys to overcommit and go by him. Now he turns on the Jets and goes up the field and then a saving tackle there. Mike Harrington, number two. First down, Georgia Tech on their 42-yard line in the spread backfield. Down they go. Jim Bob Taylor looks out, flares it out to the fullback, 48. 48 is brought down on his 44-yard line. He's hit there by Moon, the linebacker, and by Willie Harris. Willie Harris, number 30, one of the hardest-hitting players on the North Carolina team. Kintera, Chris Kintera is down. He's injured on the field. So while they attend to the split in, Cantera will tell you the score. North Carolina 7, Georgia Tech nothing. That's the injured uh, receiver, Chris Cantera from Tempe, Arizona. He made a couple of circus catches last week against Memphis State. If he can't come back in, they'll miss him. Right now, second down, 8, Georgia Tech on their 44. Trailing 7 nothing. first period. They give it off to the fullback or the flag drop. Eddie Fortier from Atlanta, Georgia. And he's hit in there by William Fuller, number 95, and Aaron Jackson, an outside linebacker. Did use the hands on the white? That's the legal use of hands on Georgia Tech. They're talking it over with North Carolina. Did use the hands? White? Decline? They decline. Georgia Tech will lose the uh, down. And the ball is still on the Georgia Tech. Well, it's on a 43 now, and it'll be third and nine for Georgia Tech. And Tara's injuries reported as a hamstring pull. So we probably won't see him again in this game. The pitch to Levette. Levette cuts through, comes out to the 45, still going at the 50, may have his first down. He's a runner of the sophomore. Cartersville, Georgia, picked up 866 yards last year as a freshman. Having oh. the word of having that number one defensive unit for North Carolina does not, does not scare number 20, Levette, at all. As he bounces outside, that a good tailback has got to do, he, he glides off tackle, then he sees what's inside. If there's nothing inside, you've got to bounce off and go outside to go up the field, and uh, he's a fine runner so far, Levette. You're looking at the back of Dick Crum, the head coach of North Carolina, who was highly in praise of Levette. Yesterday, we'll talk more about that. Taylor, the quarterback, shoots it out. It is incomplete. He was trying to hit his tight end, Ken Wisenhunt, but it was behind him. And a good pass rush that time by the nose guard, Steve Fortson, 96 for North Carolina. You know, Taylor's not really that mobile, but he was able to sidestep a couple of whippy tacklers there, move over to his left, and try to get Wisenhunt, so he showed a lot of uh, poise on the play. Not real mobile, but can move his feet. We have eight minutes, 18 seconds to play in the first period. North Carolina leading Georgia Tech 7-0. This is a second down and 10 play from Carolina's 47. Levette out in motion. He's an excellent pass receiver, too. 
Look at that. Uh, you're going to try and run on North Carolina. Fortier, the fullback, who only carried 11 times coming into this game, is stopped cold by William Fuller, the tackle, and Chris Ward, the inside linebacker. Take a look at the middle of the defensive line here for North Carolina, how they really have a nose for the football. They just find out who's got the football and concentrate. It's an 11-man defense. That's Crumb's philosophy. 11 guys going for the ball. No individual stars. Third down, nine to go. Georgia Tech on the North Carolina 46. Got a slot formation right. Taylor with good protection. Down he goes. He's got a man open, and he completes it at the 22-yard line of North Carolina, hitting Glenn Etheridge, the, the senior from Mabel, Georgia, for a first down. That pass right on target, Tom. Uh, Taylor's throwing the ball with an accuracy rate of about 66% so far this season. He does not have a touchdown in the air yet, but he shows the ability that he can do it as Etheridge makes a good catch in traffic. That was a gain of 23 yards for Georgia Tech, and of course, this is their deepest penetration of the game. The motion is Kiesler. Over the 20 and down to the 17 goes Robert Levette. You know, Levette has the second best high school record in the state of Georgia's history to Herschel Walker. And Levette really thought he could go to Georgia and maybe beat Walker out. That's how confident he is. But Georgia Tech convinced him, look, Walker's got three more years there. Come here and you're going to be an immediate starter as a freshman, Bill Curry told him. And Levette says he's glad he went there. It is now on the 18-yard line, second down, six. Georgia Tech in possession. Pass coming up. Quick one. Great catch. Levesque, what a grab. It shows you the ability of this sophomore. Under the gun there, two men draped all over him. A leaping catch with intense concentration. And he held on to it. It's first and goal to go for Georgia Tech. All of that was the number one receiver a year ago with 45 catches. He is really a prime target. And uh, Taylor having a good day. First and goal to go. Georgia Tech on the North Carolina six-yard line. Out of the I formation. Kiesler in motion. The pitch is to Levette. It was behind him and it's floating down. Broke his stride. The pitch did not lead him correctly. He had to reach back for it and it broke his timing and he had to break stride. This is strictly, strictly a technique problem here. Taylor trying to get the ball. He catches it on the off shoulder, which shows the good hands and concentration that Levette has. It's only a sophomore, but he really uh, has himself under control and really control his body. We have a second down, eight to go for a Georgia Tech touchdown. North Carolina leading 7-0, 5.40 to go in the first period. High formation, Kiesler in motion, and that's going nowhere. He's buried. That was going to be a bootleg play. He's going to fake the handoff and then roll out, try and bootleg around his own left end. Coming in on him to hit him was Willie Harris, and they smothered him. Back on the 20. The hardest hitter on the defense, number 30, Willie Harris, just stays at home. He comes across. His assignment is do not let anybody outside. Contain, contain. And Taylor tries to get outside. Number 30 staring him right in the face. He's the hardest hitter on this ball club. Trump thinks a lot of Willie Harris. Now they have a third and 20 to go for a touchdown. They'll probably send five receivers out on this play. They do. Now they give it off in a draw to 48. 48. Carrying the ball uh, more today than uh, they normally expected him to. Might have been a smart call, but uh, North Carolina alerted in their secondary. It's on the 16 of Carolina. Fourth and 16 for a touchdown. And Ron Rice is going to try the field goal. He has hit six in a row now. Six out of six. Here's the spot, it's from the 23, the kick is up, and the kick is no good, his screen is broken. He missed the 33-yard field goal. Georgia Tech drove to the six, North Carolina held, and our score remains, North Carolina seven, and Georgia Tech nothing. <laughs> Tech place kicker Ron Rice trying to go for his seventh in a row at a field goal. Misses. Now watch his reaction. He knew right away 
that he had no chance of getting the three-pointer. North Carolina first down on their 20. It's off to the flanker. Flanker reverse, Mark Smith, number 45. Didn't fool Georgia Tech too much. Trailing a play was linebacker Dwayne Wood of Miramar, Florida. And he brought the ball carrier down just short of the 25-yard line of North Carolina with four minutes to go here in the first period. And North Carolina leading 7 to nothing. Sellout crowd, as you can see, at Keenan Stadium. Second down, six. Jones is out at fullback. Eddie Colson, 34, is in. They alternate the, the fullback spot, bringing in plays, working out of the eye. Horton, the tailback, has it. He ripped it maybe for the first down to the 31-yard line. Robert Jaraz, the outside linebacker, made the hit on him. There goes Horton charging through the line. Now he's starting to turn on some of that 4-7 speed. He's still gliding, watching his blockers, and Bobby Hodge uh, comes up to make the stop, but he really follows his blockers very, very well. Smith blanks to the left. Victor Harrison to split in to the right. They use a multiple offense. North Carolina, here's a quickie. And the pass is incomplete intended for Mark Smith. The pass was thrown low, but he couldn't keep his feet. Second down, 10. Stan Cabbage stepped in last year when Elkins was injured, started two games, very good one against Maryland, and did not have a good game against Clemson. Completed 52% of his passes in his career at North Carolina. He'll be the heir apparent for the starting quarterback role, maybe the rest of this year, and certainly next year in his senior year. Second and 10 for North Carolina. On their 31-yard line, out of the eye. And Horton, they got a flag down. Horton ran in. He saw trouble, and he was trying to back up a little bit and find another way to go. But it was too late. Got illegal use of the hand on the blue. That's the legal use of the hands in North Carolina. By the way, they've been a highly penalized team so far. They've been penalized 37 times for 296 yards. Georgia Tech has declined the penalty. That'll put the ball on the 33-yard line of North Carolina, third and eight. Question really is, can Tech stop the offensive machine of North Carolina? They've moved the ball very well on that last drive. They moved the ball down the field. They missed the field goal, of course, but they could move the football offensively. Can they stop North Carolina defensively? That's the question. Moving is the left uh, tackle, Brian Blados, who, by the way, came in to... Uh, Dead ball, illegal procedure, loose. That's five yards against him. Brian Blados came in to camp or to uh, fall practice weighing 315 pounds. Watch the right-hand side of your screen. See him moving. He's, he's busted the signal. He knew it. Now it's back to the 28 of North Carolina. It's third and 13. And Blados got himself down to 290. So he lost 25 pounds in early September. Out of the eye. They're going to run the ball, and Horton nearly broke it, but not quite. He comes out to the 38-yard line. Short of the first down. Picked up 10, but it's fourth down now. And three yards to go for North Carolina, and they're going in a punt formation. David Lowe is the punter. He is a 25-year-old sophomore. Jack Westbrook is back as a safety man. Lowe decided not to go to college. He has an interesting story. When we get time, we'll talk about it. A 25-year-old sophomore. Here's the kick. Tumbling Westbrook is going to field it on his 24. 25 to the 30. Westbrook is down at the 33-yard line. So Georgia Tech now goes to the attack. And before they take over, we'll tell you the score. North Carolina 7, Georgia Tech nothing. The tough luck senior quarterback, Rod Elkins, on crutches, had the orthoscope uh, surgery. To, that's where they put a tiny hole now into the knee and with the light, and they don't have to open it all up, and they took out the torn cartilage. There's the coach Dick Crum, and Elkins may be able to play in a month. Georgia Tech's ball, first down in their 32-yard line, in the I formation. The fake to Levent, and right back comes Taylor with a pass hitting Wizard Hunt. Wizard Hunt wrapped up by Walter Black, the right cornerback, and Micah Moon, the inside linebacker. But Jim Bob Taylor now has hit five out of seven. Short, accurate passing game. The key here is he's throwing through lots of receivers. He's hit Cantara, he's hit Wizard Hunt, he's hit Harrington, he's hit Levette on passes. He's really moving the ball around. Second down three for the rambling wreck. They're trailing 7-0 late in the first period. 
Here comes Levet. There's nothing there, and he's brought down on a slashing tackle by that hitter, Willie Harris of Wilson, North Carolina. Dick Crump says he's the hardest hitting player I've ever coached. This is only the third starting assignment for Willie Harris. And man, he looks like he's been playing 30 games here as he diagnoses plays real well. He's a good forcer. Comes from outside, gives his leverage on his tackles, and levels number 20, Robert Levette. Georgia Tech's ball on their 36, third and six. Lynn Etheridge is in at tight end, number 85. Now they have a double receiver set up over there on the far sideline, spreading them out. Kiesler was in motion. There's a flare out. It's to 48, and 48, the fullback, is dropped to the 40-yard line of Georgia Tech, hit by Chris Ward, the leading tackler, and by Willie Harris again, number 30. Hey, look at Harris here, backpedaling a little bit, trying to diagnose the play again, getting coverage, good feet, knows when to come up and charge. He's under control, that's the key. Try to be under control, stop the player as much as you can and wait for your teammates to help. Ron Rice in punt formation. He's averaged 41.6 a kick. North Carolina has 10 men up at the line of scrimmage. Will they go after him? There they go. And he gets it away. A wobbly boot coming down to the 24. A fair catch call there by Walter Black. And North Carolina will take over on their 24 yard line. A punt of 36 yards, no return. So we have the end of the first quarter here. And the score, North Carolina University 7 and Georgia Tech nothing. Gowdy, Tom Gatewood as we open the second quarter here. And Kelvin Bryant's in the game. There's Bryant with the ball in his first carry. He spins out. He's had a bum ankle and the crowd reacts to Bryant being in the game. This is a fellow that played only half the season last year and gained over a thousand yards and scored 15 touchdowns. Bryant injured against Vanderbilt. Sat out the whole Army game. He's had a week of practice trying to get himself in shape. He looks like he's in pretty good shape there as he does a little bit of a pivot spin move. He gained 16 yards in that play. He's the deep man. He's the tailback on the eye. First down, North Carolina to 40. He has the ball again. He breaks away to 45 to the 50. And Bryant to the 48. And does North Carolina love this? Two carries by their Heisman Trophy candidate. Kelvin Bryant. He comes right to the line of scrimmage, looking between the guard and the tackle, saying, hey, where do I go? Follow my blockers, and then use my foot speed and my balance and power. Uses all of those things, all of those phases of the running game, all incorporated in one. Now you know why he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. 29 yards in his first two carries as he enters the game, nagged by a sore ankle. On the handoff to Mark Smith. Smith of the 50, 45, 40. Smith has a first down as he skips out of bounds along the 37-yard line of Georgia Tech. Ted Thurston drove him out. There's the first quarter stats, Tom. Well, you can see so far, domination by Tech in possession. A lot of that was eaten up by that long drive that they had where they missed the field goal, but it's pretty even so far. It's just a turnover, the only difference really in the ballgame. North Carolina scored on a 42-yard drive after intercepting a pass. Georgia Tech had a long drive. They went to the six-yard line, then they were stalled. First down, North Carolina, 37 of Georgia Tech. The fullback comes through. Eddie Colson, Colson, a quick hitter, a trap for him. He's looking for Bryant to go wide, and Colson up the middle on the trap. A great block by the inside of that North Carolina line. Look for Spruill, McGrew, and Drexler up front. Just clearing out the way for the running back, Colson. You really don't have to be a great ball carrier to be able to run through that kind of a hole. I tell you, they opened up in a hurry, and he got up the field straight ahead. Nothing bouncing outside, just get as much real estate as possible. Well, right now, they're eating up that Georgia Tech alive. They come 41 yards in just four plays. There's Kelvin Bryant on the swing outside, and he is hit hard by Sammy Brown to free safety. And by Rob Horton, the linebacker. They came up. Great play by Sammy Brown, 190-pound senior of Warner Roberts. That puts the ball in the 19-yard line. And Georgia Tech makes it second down. Then North Carolina leading. Just over 30 minutes to play in the first half. Dave Truitt. Tight end. 
up in motion. Bryant finds the hole, and he's buried. He got to the 16. They hit him and drove him back. Rob Horton, second on the team in tackles, the 16. Nailed him there and drove him back and spot the ball on the 17 as the rambling wreck stiffens momentarily. Now Bryant comes out, and Ethan Horton goes in, and Bryant gets a hand. He leaves the game. Jim Notton comes out. Eddie Colson going in a fullback, bringing in a play. Well, that wasn't a bad uh, effort. Four carries, 29 yards, 7 yard average. And time is now being called by the quarterback, Scott Stenkavi. And he'll come over to the bench to discuss this situation. They might have had a mix-up at the line of scrimmage. Timeout, North Carolina. The score, North Carolina 7, Georgia Tech nothing. Okay. Bill, Bill Curry, on your right, Georgia Tech coach, Dick Crum. Up comes North Carolina. Big play here for Georgia Tech. Third and eight, North Carolina. Georgia Tech has a four-man front. Let's put an extra tackle in there. The pitch is to Calvin Bryant. He's going to throw a pass, and it is complete. It's complete. Just short of the five-yard line to Mark Smith. Perfectly executed half-back pass. Calvin Bryant to Mark Smith. When you've got a tailback who can do as many things as Bryant, you really can't key. Here the defense comes up because they think he's going to run the ball. Here's Mark Smith wide open on an out on somewhat of a crossing pattern, wide open on the play. Nifty catch by Mark Smith, the fans of North Carolina. Bryant ran a whirl toward that goal line, and Sammy Brown came in and whammed him. Sammy Brown made the hit on him. That's twice he stopped Calvin Bryant. That puts the ball on the two-yard line, second and two to go for a North Carolina touchdown. They're already in the lead, 7-0. Again, Sammy Brown coming up to make the hit on Calvin Bryant. We told you about the touchdowns. Uh, Lydell Mitchell, remember him at Penn State? Later with the Baltimore Colts. He scored 29 touchdowns in the year of the all-time collegiate record. Calvin Bryant had 15 touchdowns in his first three games last year when he tore up his knee against the Georgia Tech team in his fourth game. He might have broken that record. Third down and a yard and... I don't believe they've made it. Calvin Bryant, yes, now they give him the touchdown. They hesitated, they held up, and finally they say he broke the play to the goal line. Calvin Bryant scores the touchdown on the dive, and North Carolina's out in front, 13 to nothing. He's got great spring ability for a guy with a bad ankle and knee surgery a year ago, just takes off here. Ball gets right to the goal line. Breaks the plane, and he's got six points. Georgia Tech might argue that one with you when they get back into the film room on Monday. We'll have the try now by Brooks Barwick. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And North Carolina sparked by the return of Calvin Bryant to the lineup. Went right down the field in that long drive. The score again. 11.20 to go in the first half. North Carolina 14, Georgia Tech nothing. After the fight later on Wide World of Sports, you'll see the Women's National Surfing Championships. Kelvin Bryant being congratulated. Seven rushes, 35 yards. He scored the touchdown. He did not start. He had a gippy ankle. Last year, he tore up his knee. Freshman year, he had a dislocated shoulder. He hasn't had four years of good luck or good health here in North Carolina, or no telling what his record might have been. Michael Harrington is deep for Georgia Tech. Bob Rogers will kick off against the slight breeze. Tumbling high into the end zone. He's going to run it. No, he starts out, wisely downs it, because those blue jerseys were pouring down there, and they would have smothered him inside the 15. Good decision there, Michael Harrington. That last drive, very important in North Carolina for the rest of the season, for Kelvin Bryant proves to himself that he can play with pain and gives his club a psychological lift because they know now that he's healthy and will be ready to operate for the rest of the season. Yeah, not that uh, Ethan Horton wasn't doing a good job, but you can see the lift as soon as 
Bryant went in there and broke that first run of 16. That North Carolina attack really caught fire. First down, Georgia Tech on their own 20. Baylor under the gun. He may run it. He's out to the 20. Comes up to the 25. And whoa! As he belled it out of bounds. He was hit there by Larry James, number one, and William Fuller, who's a very quick tackle. Fuller is a tremendous defensive player. Now this North Carolina team is loaded. And Larry James, number one, is in for Greg Poole. They're all conference player a year ago at cornerback. He's been out with an injury, and James is in there. Started the last two ball games. He really can pop you. Very physical team, the North Carolina team. Jim Bob Taylor gains six yards, second and four for Georgia Tech from their 26. They have to get moving. They're trailing 14-0. Here's the pitch to LeVette. LeVette's got a block. He's out to the 30. It'll be a first down, and he is stopped at the 37-yard line by Walter Black, the right cornerback. Keith Blanton, 28, the fullback, threw a nice block, and that, that got him around the corner. He doesn't need much. Just a slight crease inside the tackles. Give him a bit of an opening around in, and he's going to get you 100 yards. He is a great young tailback. Curry's got to be pretty encouraged by watching LeVette move the ball, and Tech, again, can move the football against this North Carolina team. First down, Georgia Tech on their 37. Roll out pass. He completes it to the fullback, 48. 48 fumbles the ball and passes on it. But that was a completed forward pass. He had the ball long enough to do the things common to football. That is, he had possession and control. It's complete under the rule. He just needs a little bit more time to be in this ball game and kind of get back in the field of the game. He was out last week with an injury, didn't play at all in the game uh, against Memphis State. He's just got to get back in the groove of being in that game pressure situation. That's all for 48. Second down five for Georgia Tech on their 42. Blanton out in motion. Ryan up the middle. That's a tough middle. And uh, Wiltshire, the outside linebacker, angle in to make the stop. Good time, just over 10 minutes of the first half. The Tar Heels leading the rambling wreck 14 to nothing. Spot the ball now in the bottom of the three of Georgia Tech and make it third down four. They're splitting Harrington to the left. In the slot, they're putting Kiesler. Harris out with a hamstring pull. That might hurt the Georgia Tech attack. Excellent receiver. Taylor. No receivers open right now. Got the ball to LeVette, and he was slammed into by Larry Jones, who broke the ball loose from his back. Boy, he was hit, and LeVette is down. He was hit from the back up there, hanging in the air. And that is the jolt, as Mr. Gatewood can tell you, who played that wide receiver position at Notre Dame when you're up there. Are you vulnerable? I tell you, the ribs are hurting right now. Mine, too. As James comes in and just really does his job, he puts his hat right on the ball and the body and goes through the man. That's what they teach the defensive back, goes through the man and put his helmet right on the ball to jar it loose. Lovett, a very, very short-handed receiver, as I pointed out a, a year ago, 45 receptions, the leading receiver for the uh, Tech squad. But when you get hit like that, really tough to hold on. Larry James being congratulated by his teammates and getting a little drink. It's pretty warm down there on that uh, surface. Larry James in Middletown, Ohio, and here could be a really bad break for Georgia Tech because he can't come back in. Robert LeVette, Cartersville, Georgia, one of the most highly recruited players in the nation, chose Georgia Tech over Georgia and many other schools. An immediate starter as a freshman. He has the second most high school records, offensive records in the state of Georgia to Herschel Walker. And already he's on his way to challenging Eddie Lee Ivory for the all-time career rushing record. And he still has two and a half years to go. The fight coming up, second-ranked WAB contender Trevor Burbick. Well, USA Poland in amateur boxing is going to be today on ABC Sports as U.S. amateur boxers slug it out with Poland's best. Here's the punt. Short, wobbly boot. Fair catch being called on the 26-yard line by Walter Black. And it'll be first down 
On the 26th for North Carolina with a score 14 to nothing, North Carolina. LaVette is on the sideline injured. He has been replaced by Cleve Pounds, number 32 of Douglasville, Georgia, a freshman. We had an offside. North Carolina offside, Jim Bob Taylor, the quarterback, talking to the offensive coordinator, Coach Dwayne Painter, who came over as former head coach of North Arizona to take over this offense. On the offside penalty, Georgia Tech gets a first down. That puts the ball on the Georgia Tech 48. 14 to nothing, North Carolina leading. 927 to play in the first half. Let's see if North Carolina shuts out Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech has moved the ball very well, except up the middle. But LeVette out might be a different matter. They're in a slot left. There goes Pounds, the new player in motion. Taylor can't find anyone open. Now he throws it. And it was dropped by Michael Harrington, number two, the split in, who was trying to be covered by Walter Black. But we have a flag again down. That is going to be holding against Georgia Tech. Right after this game next, it'll be the USA versus Poland in amateur boxing. And later today, more boxing. Second rank WBA contender Trevor Burbick takes on Ronaldo Snipes in a heavyweight slugfest. Here they the hands on the white. First down. That'll be live from Atlantic City. And then later on Wide World of Sports, the Women's National Surfing Championships. Lavetta's has come back in the lineup. 43-yard line of Georgia Tech. First and 15. Easler in motion. Here's LeVette. Trying to cut. There's an excellent play by number 11, Walter Black, who wouldn't let him get outside, turn him in. One-on-one. -on -one. Dropped him in the open field. That's what a good quarterback must do. Obviously, LeVette just out with a little bit of off the wind. Really wasn't uh, hit that hard. Just uh, lost a little bit of his air. One score, number two Pitt losing to West Virginia, three to nothing in the first quarter. Virginia's playing real well in Clemson, leading Kentucky, seven to nothing in the first. Second down, 15. Jim Bob Taylor, he is sacked. Steve Fortson. Number 96 for those guard got him in Dayton, Ohio. Boy, how he was pouring in there. Big credit to the defensive secondary for North Carolina. They must be shutting those receivers down for Tech because Taylor is taking more than three or four seconds trying to find the receiver. And then the, the nose guard, Fortune, comes in and smothers him. So the defensive secondary consisting of Harris and James Hendrickson and Black doing a great job covering the Tech, uh, tech offensive receivers. That's the second sack today by North Carolina. Third down, 24 for Georgia Tech. From their 33. On a rollout pattern. And he just shoots a short one out, way short of the first down to Eddie Fortier, the fullback senior from Atlanta, way short of that first down. Larry James is right there. Let him have the short play rather than get beyond him. And punt formation is coming up for Georgia Tech now. Line of scrimmage will be their own 40. Fourth down and 17. Walter Black is the safety man. Greg Poole normally is safety, but he is injured. He was the third string All-American last year, a cornerback. Ron Rice is kicked. Black takes it on the 20. Spins around and is being dropped there. Forward motion stopped around the 22-yard line. And he was hit there for Georgia Tech by number 97, Mike Martin. ABC is going to present the American League Championship Series. That'll start Wednesday, October 6th. Tuesday, uh, October 5th. That's going to be probably in Anaheim. California won last night, which at least in time. We'll tell you more about that. 
out to the 29-yard line of North Carolina. And carrying the ball is Tyrone Anthony, number eight. California won last night, so did Kansas City, but California's clinched at least a tie. Wednesday, the National League playoffs will start in St. Louis. That's Wednesday, October 6th. What a finish to this baseball season. And we're going to get you up to date on what's happening today in Major League Baseball and present more of the circumstances to you. All the playoffs will be covered on ABC. Anthony again, Tyrone Anthony, a flat of North Carolina. He's the best receiver of those backs. They have three excellent tailbacks on this North Carolina team, headed by Calvin Bryant, who flashed his last season healthy for him in here briefly today. Another thing that makes that uh, high formation effective is that that last play, they were in a wishbone look with a triangular backfield set. They also go from the straight eye formation, they go from the split back formation, and they send people in motion. So all those things are designed to hide the tailback so that nobody can key directly on the tailback. In this case, it's Anthony. Dame Jones in a fullback, replacing Colson. Trying around his uh, right tackle, Tyrone Anthony. Anthony will be spilled at the 37-yard line, a four-yard pickup. None of these plays look too effective, but when you start and look at the yard line, it's second down, six, four, five, six yards every carry. The coach at Vanderbilt last week said it's very difficult to key on the high formation back for North Carolina. When Herschel Walker gets the ball in Georgia, they know Herschel's getting the ball because he never disguises himself, but North Carolina does a good job of disguising. In motion is Mark Smith. Fullback takes it. That's Eddie Colson. And Eddie Colson to the 50-yard line and nudging over into Georgia Tech territory. That'll be another first down as the clock stops. Here's what happened last night. Baltimore needing all four games this weekend to win their division. Swept a doubleheader by convincing scores last night. And they are one game back. They need to win today to tie it. And if they do, then it's all down to the final game on Sunday. And ABC will be there on Sunday if they have not uh, clinched Milwaukee to cover the final game of the American League Eastern season. Here's what happened last night. Atlanta shut out San Diego 4 nothing. Rick Mundy hit a grand slammer. The Dodgers beat San Francisco 4 nothing. So Atlanta's still one game ahead. San Francisco now in desperate shape, two games out. We can still get a possible tie to down probably the last day in the National League West. Rollout by Seth Cabbage. Trying to run for that first down, and he may have it as he skips out of bounds right at the first down chain at the 44-yard line of Georgia Tech. He's driven out by Wayne Wood, the inside linebacker. He's got to make Crum nervous. That's the same kind of play that Elkins got injured in the Army game, a play where he was trying to get out of bounds. He hasn't learned the hook fight, according to Crum. He hasn't uh, developed the ability to just kind of slide and take the hit rather than trying to get that extra yardage. That time, I know he was probably a little nervous about uh, Sam Cabbage, whether he was going to turn upfield or go out of bounds. There's your score, 14-0, North Carolina. Dick Crum, former coach, Miami of Ohio, before coming here. High formation, Anthony surging over the 40 to the 39-yard line. Tyrone Anthony of Plaston, North Carolina, a junior. Morton is a sophomore, and Calvin Bryant will graduate this year. He's a senior. But they'll have two experienced tailbacks returning next year in the Tar Heel attack. Second and five for the Tar Heels on the Georgia Tech 39. Four minutes to go in the first half. Smith in motion. Staying on the ground, Anthony tripped up again and a slam down on the 38-yard line of Georgia Tech. Dwayne Wood, who is the leading tackler of the last two years, leads this year. Take a look at what kind of feet, what kind of hitting ability Dwayne Wood has. He's a senior. He knows where the ball carrier is, wraps his arms around, makes a short tackle. There's been a few missed tackles in this ball game. And I tell you, Wood, he grades real high. Like last, uh, last week, he graded in the 90s as far as not making too many mistakes. Horton's back in at tailback. Jones at fullback. Third and three. Horton has the ball. Horton 
has the first down, I believe, to the 33-yard line of Georgia Tech. Just a power-off tackle play. This is one of the best offensive lines in the country these tailbacks are running behind. You can see a disadvantage of being six foot four. if there's any such thing as a... Uh, see North Carolina way ahead in rushing. 156 to 17 to Georgia Tech. Uh, pointing out North Carolina's running back, uh, running straight up and down. You really can't do that. Horton, he's six foot four, lots of power, lots of strength, but he kind of picks his way. He's not really using all six foot four, that body frame that he's got. That ram is the mascot of North Carolina. First down for North Carolina. On the Georgia Tech 33. North Carolina now is being very conservative, sticking on the ground. They're controlling the game and the clock. 3.15 to go in the first half. North Carolina leading 14 to nothing. Touchdown in the first quarter after intercepting a pass. They drove 42 yards, Horton scoring, and they've had a 76-yard drive in the second quarter with Calvin Bryant scoring. Mark Smith in motion. Calvin Bryant's in the game. He's got the ball. Bryant trying to turn. He does at the 40. Still going. Out of bounds. Inside the 25. Bryant runs 109-3. Bryant gets lots of help up front. He's got Drexler throwing a lead block as he pulls here, number 54. Just gets in the way. Then you'll see number 45, Mark Smith, the flanker coming to the picture a little bit later. He also helps the block downfield. Again, Drexler, number 54, throwing the lead block. Then 45 just gets in the way of somebody, Mark Smith, who has made a, a good catch on the play earlier. They intercepted and a touchdown lost. They had a touchdown. Robert Jerez. Open field in front of him on the flare pass out to the right in his hands, and all he had to do, somebody might have caught him, one of those speedy backs. Watch this one. Jarrett has a chance to be a hero. Last week, he had the game of his life against Memphis State. He had 10 tackles. Uh, he forced a fumble. He recovered a fumble. He was a big hero in that win last week against Memphis State. Had a chance to be a hero again. Just lost his concentration on the play. Uh, he might have had a touchdown on that one, which would have put Georgia Tech back in again. Brian has the ball, and he's tackled to the 25-yard line. Sammy Brown seems to really be able to tackle Kelvin Bryant easier than anyone on the Georgia Tech team. That's the third clean hit he's made on the All-American and brought him down. Sammy Brown, the free safety. Yeah, maybe he's picked up a tendency. Some of players, no matter how veteran they are, even if they're Kelvin Bryant, tip their hand a little bit. They may be leaning a little bit to the right, leaning a little bit to the left, or maybe that defensive back is keying on the offensive block. They're trying to get a, a hint on where it's going. There's a flag down. They're going for that first down on the short plunge by Ethan Horton, the power back brought into the game. But a flag drop. North Carolina's rushed the ball for 167 yards to 17 yards for Georgia Tech. That's how superior North Carolina's been. And Horton really used his body on that play. He got his shoulders in there, kind of lunged forward for that extra yardage. They're going to measure. We've not had a preliminary signal as what this penalty is. It's obviously against North Carolina. Now, if they fail to make the first down, Georgia Tech would refuse the penalty. But they've got the yardage. Let's listen now. Is that where the stake was? Five yarder. An illegal motion of the balloon. Four down. A legal motion against North Carolina puts the ball in the 29-yard line. Brooks Barwick, who has kicked nine straight field goals, four hung over from last year, is going to try a 46-yarder. Holding his stand, Cabbage, the quarterback. And the kick is up, up, and it is no good. A low one that faded to the right. So Georgia Tech held it. And with a minute 43 to go in the first half, the score, North Carolina 14, Georgia Tech nothing. Kurt Gowdy, Tom Gatewood here in Keenan Stadium, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, sellout crowd, 49,500. It's a hot day, it's about 84 degrees now. Georgia Tech's ball, first down in their 29. They have a minute 43 remaining in the first half to try and do something. The I formation, Levette's the tailback. Keister's in motion. The pitch is to lose. Oops, they have flags down and stop the play. Oh, 
got a dead ball. Illegal procedure. Fight. Legal procedure on Georgia Tech. Anytime that whistle blows on illegal procedure, play stops. That was going to be a pitch out. Yeah, the tight end on the left side, number 80, Gary Wilkins, misjudged the snap count a little bit ahead of time. First and 15 for Georgia Tech now. On their own 24-yard line. High formation. In motion is Kiesler. There's the pitch to Levette. Levette cutting back. He was tripped up. He had good penetration that time by Micah Moon. He came in and hit him and knocked him off balance. Moon number 39 of Alda Vista, Virginia. And Ickes then made the tackle on him. There's Moon. He's playing in place of Shepard, the leading tackler on the team. That's how deep they are. Second stringers come in here and do as well as the first stringers. 25-yard line. Georgia Tech, second down, 14. They've had a good pass completion percentage, but all for short yardage. Now they got a new quarterback in there. The left-hander just came into the game. Stu Rogers, number four of Miami, Florida, junior. Trying to see if he can get this club moving. Rogers played last year when Taylor got injured. They were thinking about redshirting him, but they said, hey, we may need him. So they hung on to him for this year. It's been most effective on the straight drop back pocket pass of the day. Whenever Taylor has had to scramble or had to throw on a sprint out, he's had difficulty completing the ball. His best percentage pass has been the drop back. Georgia Tech has had one drive today that carried to the six of North Carolina. Now Rogers wants a timeout. They'll have two timeout left, so he goes over. He didn't like the situation. Evidently some confusion at the line of scrimmage. Really surprised that Kerry has put him in the ball game this late in the, the half trying to get something going because again Taylor has been effective but he's been scrambling maybe he's lost his concentration out there his receivers haven't had much opportunity to get open because Carolina's been all on top of them we were talking to Bill Curry Tom the head coach at uh, Georgia Tech and he said I mean this honestly I think North Carolina has the best college athletic program in America they won the national basketball championship last year their football team was in the top 10 they beat Arkansas in the Gator Bowl they have won the national lacrosse championship the last two years 26 sports here at North Carolina 16 were ranked in the top 20 of the American sports program now that's quite an all-around record I tell you when you're a winner it's easy to recruit too. They don't have much problem staffing up this ball club for North Carolina. It's a beautiful campus and a great uh, educational facility. Dick Crum has done a tremendous job building this club after coming from Miami of Ohio to put together some great back-to-back uh, -back seasons. Third down, 14 to go. Georgia Tech from the 25, trailing 14 to nothing. Kiesler in motion. They're going to run the draw play to Glatton. That doesn't get much out to the 29-yard line. Georgia Tech, fourth down and a punting situation. That will be fourth and 11. That tackle by Ickes. Lee Ickes. East Carolina has called a quick timeout. They want to preserve as much time on the clock with 53 seconds remaining in the half to try to maybe get on the board. They can maybe block the punt. If they get it in a good field position, maybe they can get a strike. I was talking before the, the game about... When you think of North Carolina, you always think of the basketball program. First, Frank McGuire here won a national title, and Dean Smith, and their winning record. And you don't think maybe football in North Carolina. Of course, I remember Charlie Justice not here today, by the way. Still the offense totally in the history of North Carolina football. But Crump came here in 79, won eight last three times, won, came here really in 78. In a losing year, his first year. 1980, he won 11 and lost one. In 1981, he won 10 and lost two. He's never lost a bowl game. He beat Michigan in the Gator Bowl in 79. He beat Texas in the Blue Bonnet Bowl in 80. And last year in the Gator Bowl, he beat Arkansas. So he's defeated major powers in big games and bowl games when he's had it. Punt formation. Walter Black's the safety man. Ron Rice to do the kicking. They go after him. Oh, they nearly blocked that. He got away a driving spiral, though. Black's in the 18. Coming, trying to shake. They're after him. He's going to run out of bounds and stop the clock. And he gets it out of bounds on the 13-yard line where North Carolina will put the ball in play. Well, the Black showed lots of smarts there. Get the ball out of bounds. Stop the clock. 
Around the clock. He's an excellent student, by the way. He showed it very heady play there. He's a Moorhead Scholar, which is the highest academic award you can receive here in North Carolina. He's got more than a three-point average, grade point average, in the classroom scholastically. This is a fine institution. Several, several honor students on the blue for North Carolina. 41 seconds remaining in the first half. North Carolina had 14 to nothing. Anthony plows his way out to the 21-yard line. Tyrone Anthony. The tackle made by Rob Horton, number 52. North Carolina may be content just to run this out and not take any chances of throwing an interception. They're on their 21-yard line with a second and two. This heat may be a factor in the second half of physical conditioning. Scott Stancavi, Doylestown, Pennsylvania, running this team. Anthony again, the tailback. Ted Thurston, the cornerback, comes up and makes the hit. And some help there by Donnie Chisholm, who now is in their second string nose guard. It's on the 24-yard line and a first down for North Carolina as the clock stops. And it shows us five seconds. Still going, now one second. And there's the end of the first half with the score. The North Carolina, 14, and Georgia Tech, nothing. We'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from our local stations. North Carolina has scored in each quarter here of the first half, building up a 14 to nothing lead with a powerful ground game. Now, we're going to be back here with some more halftime activity. Right now, let's go to our New York studios for an update around the nation by Jim Lampert. Our halftime score, North Carolina 14, Georgia Tech nothing. Carolina scoring in each first uh, in the first period, then again in the second. They have dominated this game on the ground. Georgia Tech had only one scoring threat. Here's the first touchdown with Ethan Horton scoring this one. Horton on a 13-yard run, just following the lead blocks of the guard, Spruill, Drexler, and the center, McGrew. Untouched, practically just cruising into the end zone for the first score of the ball game. And that shows you how good that offensive line is. That capped the 42-yard drive. Now the second touchdown, Kelvin Bryant's in the game. Again, following the same block as he just straight up the middle, going over the three guys over the center, using the leaping ability to go to the goal line and meeting Tech at the line and gets the score. Bryant played sparingly in the second quarter, did not start, was held out because of an injured ankle. But there are three deep in that tailback. All right, Georgia Tech has moved the ball some with a short passing game. Not very much otherwise. Now, what do they have to do here in this second half? This is an outstanding college defense they're playing against. I think they're going to have to reestablish the game plan. I think initially they came out throwing the football, looking for Kintera. Kintera out with a hamstring pull. Now Curry's got to go in at halftime, reorganize, get a new game plan because originally they were going to throw. Maybe they've got to do that same thing but pick another primary target, not Kintera. But then your impressions of the best sophomore tailback at Georgia Tech. He's shown he can do everything. He's caught the ball. He's run the ball well. Uh, they've got a good uh, starting line in front of him. They've got a lot of three-year starters for Georgia Tech, too, and they have proved that they can move the football. They had a little trouble with inconsistency. Well, we'll see what the young Georgia Tech team does in the second half. You know, these are two great schools, not only here on the football field, but outstanding educational institutions. And right now, let's visit the campuses of Georgia Tech and North Carolina. Lavette, rushing yards. Robert Lavette, 30. Brian has that. Here are the uh, halftime statistics completely dominated by North Carolina. Absolutely, the edge going in the rushing. Again, they had a lot of depth at tailback with all three tailbacks being in there, Brian Horton and Anthony, 178 yards way ahead. Total yards, 200, almost double the 93 for Georgia Tech. And time of possession, pretty even, but that's because of the tailback-oriented offenses that both teams have. And that is a surprise that Georgia Tech's almost had the ball as much time as North Carolina. LeVette, by the way, the sophomore, who ran for 168 yards against this Carolina defense as a freshman last year, has been held at 30 yards in the first half. 
and they really keyed in on him. Look at this score. Duke was a big favorite over there. Seven nothing. They're playing over uh, in Durham. Clemson leading Kentucky 14 to nothing in the second quarter. Maryland three, Syracuse nothing in the second quarter. North Carolina State, Virginia, George Welch, new head coach, 10-0 over North Carolina State. Wake Forest, Virginia Tech scoreless in the first period. I'm Georgia Tech Rooters up here from Atlanta. We're waiting for the kickoff now. Mark Smith's back deep. Rice will kick off. Victor Harrison's the other receiver, and here it comes, deep in the end zone, and they're going to down it. Ron Rice, I think, has had only one or two kickoffs returned on him this year. His college kickers, Tom, are getting so good. And then here's the uh, defensive lineup now. Burke's in there at nose guard. Diet at the end. Bobby Hodge, the other end. Jaraz linebacker. Wood, outstanding today. Inside linebacker. Horton, the other inside linebacker. And Dante Jones, the outside linebacker. First down, Carolina on their 20. There's a loss by Horton. Coming in to hit him. Thurston is the cornerback. Leads the team in interceptions. Travis, a freshman, starting cornerback. The safety man, Westbrook, strong safety. Here's a man I've been impressed with, Sammy Brown, who's made some big hits on Kelvin Bryant. He's been very, very consistent, almost like he, he has the, uh, uh, the game plan in his hip pocket. <laughs> North Carolina on their 17, second down, 13. Ethan Horton in there, it goes out to him. He's a good receiver, and he picks up the first down on the short passing game. Stan Cabbage to his tailback, Ethan Horton, who came out of the backfield. The tackle by the two linebackers, Rob Horton and Dwayne Wood. There's Stan Cabbage at quarterback. Horton and Colson right now in the backfield. Smith and Harrison are the wide men. Blados, Drexler, McGrew, Spruill, Conwell, and Sickles, the offensive line. And they throw the flags. Sickles may have moved. Something happened there. Cal Ocathone is in Get at nose guard. Illegal procedure, blue. A legal procedure. I believe it was the tight end Sickles who moved. This will put the ball on the North Carolina 28-yard line and give them a first down and 15. This is Dick Crum on the sideline, really looking for. Drexler, the All-America guard, McGrew and Spruill to keep springing those tailbacks for North Carolina. And speaking of tailback, Kelvin Bryant's in. They fake it to him. The pass cut by Mark Smith. He had to go up there after it. He's made a couple of good catches today. A great uh, block there by Drexler, the left guard. Drexler has really impressed me. I can see why he made those All-American teams of the junior last year. Yeah, Stan Cavage throws a good ball here, spiral, and Smith really stretches his body out here, concentrating all the way and keeping his feet inbound. Just as he released that ball, Stan Cavage, you saw the block by Drexler, who knocked the rusher down. Bryant trying to wriggle his way. He goes to the 44-yard line. That should be good enough for a North Carolina first down. Kelvin Bryant played in the opening game against Pitt. Pitt's defense uh, stalled him some, and uh, Pitt didn't do much against North Carolina. Tough defensive game, Bill Curry. 7-6 to six final score of that one, Pittsburgh. Then Bryant had a bad ankle. They kept him out of the Army game last week, but he's being used today. Play action pass. There's Smith again at the 40, and he stopped at the 38-yard line. And there's a flag down, maybe for a late hit on number 22. Travis made the tackle, and Jack Westbrook may have made a late hit on him. Let's listen. Personal foul. White. That's what it was. They'll mark a penalty off after this pass completion. Sam Cavett having a lot of success hitting his receivers on this drive because the secondary for Georgia Tech is spending a lot of time dropping back deep. They don't have that much confidence in their speed, their ability to uh, to run, so they drop back very, very deep in the secondary and give those receivers a chance to catch the ball in front. 
Well, this drive started on the North Carolina 20. They lost three in the first play of uh, the second half. And now here they are on the Georgia Tech 23. North Carolina leading 14 to nothing. And they're opening their offense up more now in the third quarter. Bryant hopping around, goes back to tailback. First down, North Carolina. Bryant has the ball. He's pushed out of bounds on the 22-yard line of Georgia Tech by Rob Horton of Metter, Georgia, a junior. Just a gain of a yard. Second down, nine for Kelvin Bryant. Say, when you got wide receivers like Smith and Harrison who can really blaze off the line of scrimmage, and you've got a secondary that's playing way off the line of scrimmage, really sets up the run for the tailback. Bryant can take advantage because there's no force people coming up, particularly to the outside. If he can bounce outside, there's no force men on the corners. Bryant has gained 48 yards in 11 carries. It's under five yards a carry. Mark Smith going in motion. They've got a blitz on, and they give it off to the fullback, Eddie Colson. Straight up the middle, running behind the trap. Marvin Dyeff, the left end, angled in to make the stop for Georgia Tech. Now the ball's on the 18-yard line of Georgia Tech at North Carolina. It's presented with a third and five. Colson comes out, and James Jones... The other fullback brings the play in. So Trump took his team up to Burlington uh, last night just to get him away from the campus and all the activity. Parents weekend here at Chapel Hill. Just wanted to get him away and get him settled down for this ball game. Right now they're trying to settle down and, and meet a third and five situation. Going to the split backfield and they took too much time getting that play off. So instead of a third and five, they're now going to have a third and ten. Delay. This puts the ball back on the Georgia Tech 23, third and 10. That's three delay calls we've had in the game. Five penalties for North Carolina for 25 yards. Sellout crowd, 49,500. Sold out every home game here for five years. You're going to ask, why don't they enlarge the stadium? And we'll tell you why. When we get some time, it's the trees that dictate it. Sounds odd, but it's got the answer. Oh, nearly intercepted there by Ted Thurston, who's already intercepted three this That's year. And uh, he has eight in his career, three short of the school record. And he nearly grabbed that one. He's not very fast, but he knows where to be at the right time. So position defense, number 41, Thurston, always in the right place at the right time. Brooks Barwick has come in. He will try a 38-yard field goal. It is up, and the kick is hits the upright, and no good. Hit the upright. Flag is dropped. Somebody was decked there when they got the ball away. Might have run into that kicker or the holder. Let's see what it's about. be a lot of confusion right now. Got the kicker on the white. They rough the kicker. That's always one of the worst penalties you can get in football because it's an automatic first down. Sometimes the team punts the ball away deep in their own territory, gets that penalty, and they get the ball back and march right down the field. Watch it hit the upright. Tech is going for a big play. Very, very late hit. The kicker goes down, and he does a good acting job, too. He knows he's on TV, I tell you. He fell down like a tree. Well, he convinced the official. First down, North Carolina now on the Georgia Tech 11. Talking Calvin about, Bryant goes back in the tailback. Talking about the problem that Van Cavage is having getting the ball off, I think it's because Tech does a lot of flopping in their secondary. They move people according to formation. Van Cavage trying to get his receiver. Now he calls time he didn't like the setup. And uh, he had to call time, so they'll have two timeouts remaining here in the second half, and he's coming to the bench to talk to his coach, Dick Crum. Timeout on North Carolina. North Carolina given another chance after having a missed field goal. They roughed the field goal kicker. It's a first down North Carolina the Georgia Tech 11. Van Cabbage with a flip. Bryant to the 10. Bryant run out of bounds on the four-yard line. Sammy Brown drove him out. Kelvin Bryant trying to get his second touchdown of the game. And the gain is for seven. Second down three for North Carolina. Kelvin Bryant, one of ten children. Quite a basketball player. He once held Dominic Wilkins to six points in the game. The All-American from Georgia. He was a spectacular basketball player. He played against each other in high school. 
Second down, three. Bryant was hit behind the line of scrimmage and then jammed up at the four-yard line. They slowed him down behind the line of scrimmage. That enabled Thurston to come in. And Sammy Brown, number 21. Yeah, quick penetration across the line of scrimmage on the right-hand side of your screen here is number 41, Thurston, coming across, slowing Bryant up enough and breaking his concentration enough to give his teammates a chance to get there. It is third down now. Here's how far they have to go. Third down and two for a first down. Brian on the sweep. Out he goes. And he's got him. A great play. Wrestling around. Sammy Brown again. That's four marvelous hits that Sammy Brown has made one-on-one -on -one against Kelvin Bryant. Bryant was really counting on a lead block by number 48, James Jones, the fullback. You see Jones come out here. Make contact, great there, but a forced job by Sammy Brown. Strictly individual effort stops the touchdown run by Kelvin Bryant. Well, we're going to have a field goal attempt again by Brooks Barwick. Well, Georgia Tech has been tough down deep in their own territory. This is twice they forced North Carolina into a field goal situation. The kick is up, 21-yard attempt, and he's got this one. A 21-yard field goal by Brooks Barwick. North Carolina increases its lead. The score now, North Carolina 17, Georgia Tech nothing. And remember, later on Wide World of Sports, the National Women's Surfing Championships. Receiving this kickoff will be Michael Harrington, the split end. He'll be number two. Kicking off will be Roberts. 17 to nothing. North Carolina ahead with 10.26 to play in the third quarter. No breeze. It's not a factor in this game. Our temperature is in the 80s. Here's the boot. Coming high, twisting down to Harrington. That's the goal line. Out he comes to the 10. And he's hit from behind and goes down on the 13-yard line. And the tackle is by John uh, Mark Oglesby. Here's the line. Fuller at tackle. Horston is the nose guard. And the other tackle is Jack Perry. Mike Wilcher, outside linebacker. Aaron Jackson, the other linebacker. Inside, Chris Ward, leading tackler on the team. And Mike Unho. We'll get the defensive back later for you. Jim Bob Taylor back in at quarterback. 40A out in motion. Fullback. At least Levette. There's a quick pitch to Levette. 15. Comes to the 20. And down he goes to the 20. Here are the defensive backfield now for North Carolina. Larry James, left corner. Walter Black, the right corner. Willie Harris, the hard-hitting, strong safety. And Steve Hendrickson, the free safety, who intercepted a pass in the first half. Second down three, Georgia Tech from their 20. And off, tripped up behind the line on a great charge here, Willie Harris. Harris, a strong safety, was off of the snap and penetrated. Here's the offense now for Georgia Tech. Jim Bob Taylor at quarterback. Levette's the tailback. Eddie Fortier is the fullback. Quintero's not in there. He's been injured. Kiesler, number 10, is the flanker. And Harrington's the other receiver. There's the offensive line. Gardner, Howell, Waters, Schultz, Loops, and Weasel Hunt the tight end. Second down, a third down, five. Taylor under the gun is hit at the five-yard line, maybe the six. Three men on him. The charge was led by the tackle, Jack Perry, number 64, and Chris Ward, the linebacker. Watch it. Aaron Jackson comes up to mop it up, too. Again, a credible job done by the secondary for UNC. Nobody open, leaving Taylor having to scramble and the penetration coming through and making the stop for the loss. That's the third sack for North Carolina. They lost 12. Ron Rice in punt formation. Walter Black, the safety man on his own 45-yard line for North Carolina. They go after him. He had to hurry that kick. Let's see what kind of a bounce it takes. It takes a North Carolina bounce. 
and skips out of bounds on the 42-yard line of Georgia Tech. So North Carolina has the ball at Georgia Tech territory when we return. Carolina leading 17 to nothing. Georgia Tech defensive huddle. Georgia Tech uh, has been moved around today by that powerhouse Carolina ground game, but when they've had to really stiffen up, they've done it, forced the Carolina into field goal situation instead of going for touchdown. North Carolina has the ball on the Georgia Tech 41-yard line. Horton's in a tailback. He has the ball. He wriggles over the 40 and goes to the 37-yard line. Brought down by Dwayne Wood, the inside linebacker, number 49. He's been in on half the tackles today, he and Sammy Brown. Here are the halfbacks today. Horton has rushed for 45. Anthony for 36. And Bryant for 55 yards. And Bryant hasn't played much. Horton's played a little bit more than he has. Second down, four. On the 37-yard line. Horton again, big hole, 30, spinning away. 25, first down to the 19-yard line. Ethan Horton. Hit by Tony Kepano. The big spring on this play is number 34, Eddie Colson, the fullback, who gets a, an exceptional block on the play. You'll see the spring Horton as he takes off. Watch number 34, fill the hole, get a linebacker, and Horton takes off. Uses a great spin move there. Goes back inside for more yardage. 67 yards rushing in this game now for Ethan Horton after that 18-yard gain. He has the ball again, Horton. He's to the 15, still going, and he's at the 13 or 12-yard line. Tripped up by Dwayne Wood once more, the inside linebacker. Another great block by the All-American Dave Drexler of Cleveland, North Carolina, number 54. We ought to be keeping our eyes on him and watching him work. He's a 253-pounder, 6'4", cat quick, and highly intelligent. He has it all. He'll be a great pro guard, too. First man through. That's the fullback. Eddie Colson. And Colson has enough for a first down. And not only is uh, Drexler smart, but he's got a lot of a playing time, a lot of experience. He's a fifth-year player. Colson comes off. Colson had a great block again uh, two plays ago. But Drexler, an academic All-American as well as a football All-American at All-ACC a year ago. 21 first down for North Carolina. First and goal on the Georgia Tech eight. There goes Horton. He's met at the five. Sammy Brown. I'll tell you, Brown weighs 190, and he's been hitting these big 220-pound tailbacks hard. I mean, when he hits them, they're not going forward. They're going backward. And depth is a factor as Terry looks on, trying to get a lot of young players in there. He's got a lot of freshmen who have been playing in the ball game. He's trying to build this club, and he's done a very good job. Off to his best start in about five years here. Uh, Georgia Tech up to the finest start in about four or five years. Colson and Horton. Horton on the pitch. Horton is dropped at the two-yard line. The ex-quarterback, Ethan Horton. Horton. He's 220, 6'4", and uh, there he is, 78 yards now, and a touchdown. The guy, yard line. The guy averaging over 100 yards per game who's not a real tailback. He's just learning that every game that he gets under his belt, he learns a little bit more, a little bit more about technique. He's doing a very, very good job. Yeah, he got a break in a way when uh, Brian got injured. There he is, Horton, and touchdown! Ethan Horton has his second touchdown of the game. And North Carolina... Bills its lead. We'll take a look at it from all angles on this one. Dwayne Wood, number 49, trying to come up. He's just a little bit late. You'll see him come into the picture here as he's tumbling, trying to get some hands on his ankles. And then Sammy Brown trying to come up, but the ball just barely slips over the goal line to score. And you'll see 49 just stumble here. Dwayne Wood, the leading tackler, trying to get in there, trying to make the stop. And Brown trying to come up for support. Now, Sammy was outweighed 30 pounds that time, one of the few times he didn't stop a running back goal. The kick is up by Brooks Barwick. It's good, and North Carolina dominating now, especially with this powerful ground game of theirs and a superb offensive line. Our score, North Carolina 24, Georgia Tech nothing. 
Major upset brewing in Gainesville, Florida. Alan Risher, the LSU quarterback, has hit his first seven passes in a row, including this 41-yard touchdown to sensational freshman running back Dalton Hilliard. LSU leads fourth-ranked Florida 17-3 back to Chapel Hill. 24-0, North Carolina. Well, this was the nation's number one defensive club coming into this game. And they certainly done nothing to take the luster away from that ranking, Tom. Absolutely. They are very tough to move the ball on. Michael Harrington is deep. Rob Rogers will kick off. Squibbler. Picked up by Kiesler, the wide receiver. He comes up to the 20 and banged into at the 21-yard line. North Carolina getting down there and is Mark Oglesby who covered that kickoff. So Georgia Tech has the first down on their 21. That's Dwayne Wood. He's been a standout today for Georgia Tech, an inside linebacker, leads the team and tackles this season. He's been all over this field today. Sure has. Got a lot of range, a lot of speed, a lot of savvy. That's the main thing. He's got experience under his belt. 21 first downs for North Carolina, six for Georgia Tech. Fake to LeVette. Taylor buried. He gave it a pump fake. I don't know whether he's pump faking and trying to hit a long one, but William Fuller, the tackle, 95, and Fortson, the nose guard, were right in there on him. Fortson moves off that nose guard position very well. That time they had double coverage on uh, Kiesler out to the left side, and Wilcher dropped off from his outside linebacker spot and was right in the, uh, the line of vision between the quarterback, uh, Taylor, and the receiver. That's what caused him to pump fake because he was not open. Second down, 20 for Georgia Tech from their 11. Taylor looking again. Nobody open. He has to scramble. Now he throws on the run. He's got a man open, and that is Lizard Hunt, the tight end. And they have called it a catch on the far sideline. Uh, pressure by Wiltshire and Fuller on the passer. That's why I had to roll left. Good toe action. Difficult throwing, running to your left. Spots Wizenhunt on the sideline. Then he tight ropes it, gets those toes. I don't know about feet, but toes right inbound. One foot, all you need. The thing that's really confusing Taylor a lot and is causing him to scramble is that that uh, defensive setup for North Carolina, again, keeps moving to the strength, moving, shifting all the time. He's not really sure what's happening. Greg Bull making his first appearance of the game, third string All-American last year. Third and three for Georgia Tech. LeVette is going to throw a pass. It was, and they hit it. Nobody open down there. Micah Moon and Greg Poole poured in on him. There's Moon, 39. Poole is 32. Atlantic Coast Conference cornerback last year making his first appearance. So they stopped Georgia Tech again. And in punt formation will be Ron Wright. But Walter Black will receive the kick. Normally Poole would be the punt returner, but he's been injured. They don't want to take any chances. Rice has had a 41-yard punting average today. Gets it away. Oh, a beautiful kick. Driving Black to the 19. Comes to the 20, 25. And is spun around and knocked down on the 27-yard line. He's hit there by Cleve Pounds, who went down to cover the kick. A 57-yard kick. Right after football, next on ABC, USA against the world. The USA versus Poland today in amateur boxing. And following later is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Second-ranked WBA contender Trevor Burbank takes on Ronaldo Snipes in a heavyweight slugfest live from Atlantic City. Also on Wide World of Sports, the Women's Masters Surfing Championships. Flipping against North Carolina. Puts the ball back on the 14-yard line of the Tar Heels. They'll have a first down. They're out in the lead. North Carolina's tailbacks. That's depth. And it's 81, 36, and 55. They get him from anyone. 
This one is Anthony, Tyrone Anthony. He's the third string tailback. They've all seen about the same action. I guess Horton's had a little more action than any of them. Yeah, I got a feeling that Anthony, number eight, is going to get a lot more action here in the closing uh, minutes of the third quarter and the fourth quarter because he's really the youngest of the of the tandem, and he really wants to get a lot of action. He's a junior. Again, a play that didn't look like much. There is a coach in America who wouldn't like it to be second and four. Six I want to read you a statistic to show you how overwhelming North Carolina's offensive line has been. Tyrone Anthony again to the 25. Dante Jones. Talking about that offensive line, look at the rushing. 242 yards for North Carolina. One yard net rushing for Georgia Tech. That's just a tremendous asset that you've got when you've got a defensive club that can continue to put the pressure on the other club, give the ball to your offense over and over and over to pound the ball. That's what happens. Uh, North Carolina's had possession of the ball so much that they've had a chance to dominate the ball game. Eddie Colson, the fullback, on the quick hitter, angling into dropping Bobby Hodge, the defensive end of Georgia Tech. Well, uh, hit from comes right out and says, you win on defense, I'm building defense here, I'm stressing defense, if we have good defenses, we can win. And he certainly got it here, number one defensive team in the country, overall second against the rush. They may go into first place against the rush after this afternoon over. Second and seven from their 28. Anthony bursting through, crossing the 45, he's to the 40, 37, Dante Jones. Valdosta, Georgia made the stop. Quite the line surge here by the offensive line. Drexler leading the way. Spruill, uh, the center, just bang, just push everybody off the line of scrimmage. No real uh, trouble blowing Georgia Tech off the line of scrimmage. That's where you've got to control the ball game, right there in the trenches. A minute 38 to go in the third period. Anthony to the 40-yard line. Tyrone Anthony, a junior. He'll be back next year. Ethan Horton, the other tailback, the sophomore. Kelvin Bryant will be gone. Don't feel sorry for North Carolina out of that tailback spot. They probably got a freshman coming along. <laughs> like I said, on defense, number one in total defense, only giving up 169 yards per game. Unbelievable. Bill Curry, by the way, appeared in three Super Bowls. He looks younger than that. He looks played for the Packers. There's the toss. It's complete. And that's Victor Harrison, number nine. Split in. Another first down. Oh, North Carolina runs the ball. Dick Crump coming down the sideline to follow his bluff. He had an undefeated season his first year head coach at Miami of Ohio, 10 and nothing. Fell on bad times, came back again with a remarkable record. He has the eighth best winning percent of active coaches in the country. Horton, cutting back over the 40, goes to the 38-yard line. Jim Anderson, third string, made it. Anthony, I beg your pardon, the rain made that uh, stop. For the last 30 seconds now of the third quarter. Talk a little bit about Kerry. He's the kind of guy you like to have this, have some success in this ball game because, uh, in just the game of football, because he's a true gentleman of the game, really knows the game, believes in conditioning. He, he himself is down to about 195 pounds after playing at 250. Second down, six for North Carolina from the 39-yard line of Georgia Tech. Big hole open for Tyrone Anthony. Still going. Anthony. Inside the 25, he thought he should have broken it. Had another great block by Drexler, 54, and Plato's the left tackle. Being a tailback is like being on stage in Broadway. On Broadway, this is his chance psychologically to show what he can do. Horton has had a chance. Brian has had a chance. Lebet on the other side of the field has had a chance, but not very much success. And now, Anthony, Tyrone Anthony, takes off and shows a lot of drive. Well, that's the end of the third quarter here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And North Carolina. Out in front, moving it on. 24 nothing, North Carolina as we head into the fourth quarter. Kurt Gowdy, Tom Gatewood, Horton's back at tailback. And he has the ball. He's to the 25 to the 20 pounds. He's way to the 18-yard line of Georgia Tech. 
The tackle by Rob Horton, 52. West Virginia, 6. Pittsburgh, nothing. Third quarter. Louisiana State over Florida, 17 to 5. Louisiana State won their first two games. Here's a surprise. Duke was favored, 17 nothing. Navy. They're playing right over here, 15 miles away. Maryland, 20. Syracuse, nothing in the second quarter. Second down, four. On the 18-yard line, Horton again. Hit. Knocked off. Anthony knocked off his feet. Stopped by Burke, the nose guard. Got a little bit of mixed emotions. Stan Cavage there, number 14, doing a good job as a field general. Rod Elkins on the sidelines on crutches, watching the success of North Carolina move the ball up and down the field. He's got to wish he was out there, but he's also got to be happy for the substitute quarterback who's in there for him, Stan, Stan Cavage. We have a third down for Anthony Jones in the backfield. Anthony has it. Anthony to five. He may have it. Well, he does have it on that second effort. Fumble. Georgia Tech has recovered. Georgia Tech, Darrell Wise, the Vidalia, freshman. We told you earlier there are 15 freshmen on this squad. They're playing today. Let's see what they give the ball to now. Wait a minute. Maybe the whistle is already blowing. They're going to say that uh, Anthony's, Tyrone Anthony's forward progress was stopped right here. The whistles were blowing. It looked like he was trying to get a little bit more yardage. The ball should be going to Tech. But instead, the ball stays with North Carolina. Now, I don't believe his forward motion was to stop. He was trying to slide off to the left. First and 10 from the 10 and a half. And there's a great rush by Bobby Hodge, number 98. To hit Stan Cavage. That's the first sack today for Georgia Tech. He shot in there like a rocket. That's one of the youngsters we're telling you about. He's only a sophomore. Bobby Hodge comes crashing in and knocks down Stan Cavage before he can unload the ball here. Just goes unblocked. He really was unblocked. came free and nailed Stan Cabbage from the rear. Just a breakdown in the communication on that uh, front offensive line for North Carolina. Well, they have a second down, 18 to go for a first down. And they don't get anything on that, Tyrone Anthony. Nailed by Dwayne Wood, the inside linebacker. The tech really gets tough. You get down close to the goal line, you get inside the 20. They really come through, get very aggressive. Surprised that Carolina hasn't gone to play action passing to try to counteract the aggressive style of tackling that Tech has used. I don't believe there's a doubt that uh, North Carolina's got to be one of the five, six, seven best teams in the country. And Georgia Tech being beaten today 24 nothing, but still has shown signs. They're going to be tough as the season goes along. Here's a slant pattern, and it's nearly intercepted by number 14, Darrell Wise, a freshman, who is replacing a freshman at cornerback. Mark Smith was intended. Just a straight slant pattern. Very well played by Darrell Wise. Darrell Wise is in there for Mike Travis, who is also a freshman. Good play. He had inside position, put his body between the receiver and the ball. Almost came up with an interception. Only a freshman. Excellent speed. Looks like 98's down. Bobby Hodge, the defensive end. Let's take a look at these third quarter stats. Overwhelmingly on the ground. Look at those rushing figures, Tom. Georgia Tech being held to one yard rushing. Again, uh, the rushing defense for North Carolina, they've been holding teams to 44 yards per game. Number two, only the Notre Dame, who's had given up 26 yards per game. One yard, that's a big factor there. Yards passing pretty even. Uh, no problem, but 364 total yards on offense by Carolina. Dominant, dominant team. Next week, North Carolina will be playing Wake Forest. And uh, next week, Georgia Tech will go to Tulane, their fourth road game in a row. Not a very good way to open the season. We'll be back here. Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the score. North Carolina 24, Georgia Tech nothing. The injured Bobby Hodge, he had just made an outstanding play a couple of plays ago. He's from Vidalia, sophomore, and he's on the bench. All right, here's a 36-yard field goal attempt by Brooks Barwick. Stan Cabbage to hold the quarterback. The kick is up, and he drives it through. Second field goal of the game for Brooks Barwick, and that makes the score now 27 to nothing in favor of North Carolina. And they'll come back. Georgia Tech will receive... Score once more. Early in the fourth quarter, 27 0 North Carolina. 
27 nothing North Carolina, 12 minutes and 7 seconds remaining. To receive the kickoff for Georgia Tech will be Michael Harrington. He is a split in from Raleigh, North Carolina. Rob Rogers will boot it. Georgia Tech is not threatened in this half. Their only threat of the game came early in the second quarter. American League Baseball scores second inning. Baltimore three, Milwaukee nothing. Baltimore swept them last night by big margins. And they're out in front again today. We'll tell you more about that situation after this kickoff. Harrington out to the five. He comes to the 10, to the 15. And he's wrestled around, dropped on the 15-yard line. Anytime you hold a club within the 20 on the kickoff, you've done a good job. Baltimore wins today. It's a tie going to the last day of the season tomorrow in Baltimore and the club that would win tomorrow. That is if Baltimore wins today. They'll play for the American League Eastern Division title tomorrow and ABC will be there covering on Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon baseball in ABC. There may be several places that we'll tell you more about. We could have three divisions going to the last day of the season. Robert Levette. They clamped him down today. Bill Bumgardner, a second string tackle, made the stop on Young Levette. The Techs really had their trouble on grass, on natural surface. Last six times that they've played on grass, they've only won one ball game. This is the seventh time, and they can't seem to uh, can't seem to get it going today either. They've got a real jinx against the natural stuff out there. Levette has 35 yards rushing and 14 attempts. Lee Pounds has replaced Levette at tailback. Second down, seven. That's Pounds. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Might have squirmed forward for another yard or two, and that's all. He hit by Steve Forty, the nose guard. Eddie Lee Ivory is the all-time career rushing leader. 3,517 yards for Georgia Tech. If Levette could average 1,000 yards this year, his junior year and senior year, he will beat Eddie Lee Ivory, but that's going to take some doing. Glad to see Eddie Lee Ivory finally get some luck up there. He's had two, uh, two knee operations since he's been with the Packers. He opens this season with 200-yard games, and they strike. <laughs> Still not lucky. Third down and five. Taylor's pass. Deflected away, and Georgia Tech will have to kick. It was intended for Cleve Pound. One thing, that, one thing that Kerry told us he had to do in order to win the ball game is get the ball of the bet. The bet hasn't carried the ball very much with much success, and he hasn't caught many passes since that first quarter when he had a couple of receptions and he almost made a grab when he got stung uh, trying to make an over-the-shoulder catch over the middle. They haven't been able to get the ball of the bet. That's been the problem. Ron Rice, they call him Howdy Doody. He had that helmet off. You looked at it, you know why. His kick, high, twisting spiral. Black fields it on the 30. And after that, he called a fair catch, so North Carolina goes to the attack again. The score is 27 nothing in favor of North Carolina. New quarterback for North Carolina is really their third stringer, Ike Brady, a sophomore from Memphis, North Carolina, about 20 miles here. Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the first down to the 30. One quarterback out already. And Cabbage is all right, but they don't want to take any chance of getting in first. There goes uh, Horton. Horton's been the leading ball carrier today, and he crosses the 35 to the 37. He was met by Danny Chisel, the nose guard. It's a good time to insert a quarterback, Ike Brady. Only a sophomore. Give him some time to be in the control. He's got lots of time here. It's 10 minutes to go. He's no pressure. It's a big lead. He's got plenty of time to relax and get to know his teammates. You know, wide world of sports here in Chapel Hill. They're playing the theme of wide world of sports in North Carolina band. Second down, three. Horton stop. Lowers that head, drives to the 40-yard line of North Carolina. Kevin Brownlee and Robert Giraz, the outside linebacker, met him there. Now he has 96 yards. He's nearly to 100 yards. So it seems not to matter who's their tailback, as great as Kelvin Bryan is, and they're not playing it much this second half. This has been a tailback school, almost like Southern California. And uh, an interesting statistic on that we'll tell you about. Third and one. He's 
got a first down, diving, Ethan Horton. The only school in America to have four 1,000-yard rushers at North Carolina and tailback is USC. Watch how Drexler gets off the ball. Number 54, fires off the ball and finds somebody to hit. Sixers have a helmet right on somebody right away. Comes across that, that initial charge, that first step, really makes or breaks the block. North Carolina on their 42-yard line. The pitch is to Horton. Horton to the 45 and drags his man with him to the 50. He's dragging Mike Martin. Ron Spruill, the other guard, the right guard, leading the way that time. For the first time in Atlantic Coast Conference history, two guards from the same team made all conference. Drexler at left guard and Spruill of Hampton, Virginia at right guard. 105 yards for Ethan Horton. 100 yarder, the landmark. That's the fullback, Eddie Colson. Smacks to the 48 yard line of Georgia Tech. Very close to the first down. Met there by Glenn Spencer, a second straight right in. They have signified a first down. Mike Brady, youngster, getting some game fire experience today. Here's Horton, and he goes to the 50 to 43. Let's go quickly to New York, and uh, a football story, Jim Lampley in New York. The possibility of an upset continues to grow in Gainesville, Florida, late in the second quarter. Alan Risher of LSU, with the Tigers leading 17-5, looks for freshman running back Dalton Hilliard in the flat. Hilliard into the end zone, his eighth touchdown of the season. It's 24-5 at halftime. Okay, now I don't know what happened to my Florida patch here. Five, Florida undefeated. LSU not supposed to have much this year. Won their first two games, but against weak opposition. You know, it's funny how a great freshman running back can come in and suddenly, like Herschel Walker did at Georgia two years ago, turn a ball club around. Yeah, they can be franchises for sure. And uh, the key is recruiting. If you've got a good recruiting program, you've got it made. Third down and six. The quarterback, Brady, running the bootleg at first down and more. Hey, he can move. He can really get out from under that center and go. Sophomore Mike Brady, the third speed quarterback, gives him a first down. He gets a decent block on this bootleg run also from number 21, Earl Winfield. The split end, the freshman, just gets in the way of people, helps him get that extra four or five yards downfield. He shows a lot of uh, promise as a runner. And we had a flag at the end of that play that's going to move the ball to penalty against Georgia Tech. Let's listen. No First foul. Of foul. What? First down. First of foul on Georgia Tech. Puts the ball on the 16-yard line of the rambling wreck. And then all North Carolina here in the second half. North Carolina led at halftime 14 to nothing. Colson and Anthony are the two backs. There's the pass. Smith. Oh! Just can't quite get it. Mark Smith, a diving effort. Thought he should have had it, but if he had... It would have been sensational, Mr. Smith. Tough angle here. You see Brady looking over the shoulder type catch. Travis was way out of position on the play. Just plain got beat. That's the fastest man in the secondary for Georgia Tech. And Smith gets behind him and almost makes a sensational grab of a Brady pass. That was a great call by North Carolina. The way they've been pounding and pounding and suddenly up, bang, throw the alley-oop down there. Second down 10 from the 16-yard line of Georgia Tech, North Carolina in possession. Brady out again on a roll. There it is into the end zone. That, one is that is Victor Harrison on the dive. Hey, this kid quarterback looks good, Tom. He sure does. Right away, he goes to it. He checks up at the line because he gets man 
to man coverage, something that Tech doesn't usually do. They're usually in a zone situation, but down here close, he spots the man-to-man -man coverage, checks off to his wide receiver, Victor Harrison, and says, hey, baby, go get open. I'll hit you. He's strictly waiting. He's looking at one guy in the huddle. He's got him. Over the shoulder, stretches out, body extension, concentration, six points. Well, you ought to know. You did it many times yourself. Barwick to kick, Brady to hold. Barwick's boot is up, and it is good. And North Carolina rolls on. They miss one catch by inches, and then came right back with another one. So our score now, North Carolina 34, Georgia Tech nothing. There's Victor Harrison, he's from Henderson, North Carolina, senior. Let's take a look at this touchdown again. It's quite a catch. Again, it's a checkoff here, and he's looking at one man. It's strictly one-on-one. -on -one. Victor Harrison, over-the-shoulder grab. Those are the kind you really like to make. Then you really hear the crowd after you make the catch. Everybody goes silent on those kind of a plays, and all of a sudden, once you hit pay dirt, crowd explodes. They sure did here in this hometown. Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Rob Rogers to kick it off. Michael Harrington deep. 34 nothing now, North Carolina. Very convincing football team today. Here's the kick coming to Harrington on the one. Harrington's out to the 10, to the 15. Oh, is he hit? He is slammed into at the 17-yard line by Bramble, Edison Bramble, a sophomore from Garden City Park, New York. Baseball update in those sizzling divisional races. Look at that in the second inning. Baltimore, three, Milwaukee, nothing. All Milwaukee needed was one out of four, and they won the division, but now they may have to struggle for it. Milwaukee just got two runs in the third. It's three to two Baltimore now. We'll get back to that. Let's pick up play here. 17-yard line. The left-hander's in there. Stu Rogers and the pass is incomplete to Kiesler, Jeff Kiesler. Four baseball. Kansas City and Oakland. Let's get the score on that one. Kiesler is shaken up on the field. California won last night. That clinched at least a tie for the American League Western Championship. So in Kansas City is their... Uh, they went into a bad streak. They lost 10 out of 11, including three out of at California. Lost their first to the series to California this week back in Kansas City. Now they've taken off. They've won four in a row. They've all of a sudden gotten hot. Yeah, but too late maybe because if California wins tomorrow, no matter what Kansas City does today or tomorrow, California will open the American League playoffs in Anaheim. But uh, I think it was 2-1 to one in the early innings, Kansas City leading Oakland today. But that Baltimore story is something. Of course, we don't know what happens today. It's three to two now. Baltimore over uh, Milwaukee. ABC will bringing, be bringing you Major League Baseball tomorrow. As for certain, they're going to have the uh, the race go down to the final day in the National League West. It'll be either at San Diego or at San Francisco. It'll be in Baltimore. It could be in California. Wherever the pennant races are, ABC will be there. And the last day of the season almost unbelievably could involve three divisional races to decide the divisional pennants. I'm a little prejudiced being, being from Baltimore. I'm uh, kind of cheering for the Orioles, I tell you. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they lost two in a row at Detroit. Then they made the big rally. They got four in the ninth inning against the Tigers. They finally beat them. That might have been the surge they needed to whip Milwaukee twice, but I don't care how far ahead you are of Milwaukee. Anytime time they're swinging a bat, they can get a big inning time anywhere. Nickel defense is in. The pass is complete to Wizard Hunt. The tight end from Stu Rogers, the quarterback. He's short of a first down at the 27-yard line of Georgia Tech. So ABC might have three crews out tomorrow. Could have more than that. Could have five uh, remote television crews out on site. Updating, uh, bringing you live action, switching from ballpark to ballpark. And one of the most exciting last days in the history of Major League Baseball. It's not over yet because the playoffs start. Here is Robert Levet turning the corner. Uh, excuse me, Cleve Pounds turning the corner. Coming out over the 30 to the 32. Levet 
was shaken up early in this half, and he hasn't played much. Look at this score. West Virginia, 13. Pittsburgh, nothing. West Virginia beat Oklahoma at Norman. Although uh, Oklahoma's lost to Southern Cal, still beating Oklahoma there is an achievement. They must have an excellent football team. Hostetler is the quarterback, faster than Penn State to West Virginia. That pass incomplete to Aaron. You don't feel sorry for Penn State, though, because they have a good one left in Todd Blackledge. He's a pretty fair quarterback. Yeah. He's not too bad. They always have one. Time remaining in the game. 5:09. It's a blow away for North Carolina, 34 nothing. I'm going to be very interested to see the progress of the Georgia Tech team. I think Bill Curry is making patient, solid progress. You can see it in some of these young players they have. There's a lot of freshmen and sophomores on the field here. They finally got a really good recruiting class this year. The left-hander running right is under the gun, and he throws it right into the arms. Uh, Greg Poole, the All-American quarterback, who's still going, and Greg Poole is at the goal line, and is he in? You can see why he made third-string All-American. He's been hurt since the opening of the season. They wanted to play him today to get him sharpened up a little bit for the remainder of the schedule. He returned that with 40 yards. They're lucky on the play because he's been injured with a hamstring pull. A uh, play like this, you can re-injure that very, very easily as he comes up, just steps up in his own coverage and a bad throw by Rogers and he takes off down the sideline. You see him stumbling there. He could have re-injured that hamstring, but he was able to recover and do pretty well. That's a stone wall met by Tyrone Anthony, number eight. Greg Poole, unanimous all-conference last year, number 32, third string All-American, playing his first action of this season. When they get them all healthy again, they're going to be something later in the year, Tom. Yeah, Carolina's had more trouble with ankles and knees than anything else. A lot of stretching. Coach Dick Crum believes in the stretching method of getting his players in condition. But uh, Poole is just one of the exceptions on that. Anthony tries a burrow and he's in there. Tyrone Anthony scores a touchdown. Three different tailbacks have scored touchdowns today for North Carolina. Anthony, by the way, is at 85 yards rushing, 110 yards for Horton, and uh, let's see, Bryant. I think there's closeness on this ball club. 55. Brian and Horton standing together on the sidelines waiting for Anthony to come to the sideline to give him a high five. Psychologically, they're all three in the ball game every play. Barwood will try, holding his Brady, the kick is up. And the kick is good. So the score now, North Carolina 41. Georgia Tech nothing, and we'll be back here to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Coming up next, USA versus Poland in amateur boxing. USA team features world champion Mark Breland at 147 pounds and the world champion silver medalist Pernell Whitaker and bronze medalist Bernard Gray. Polish team features several world champions of their own. That's coming up next, USA versus Poland in amateur boxing. Harrington again deep. It's been a busy day for Rob Rogers kicking off. Harrington running it out to the 15. And these guys hit special teams every time. I tell you, when you get a 41 point cushion, it makes it a little easier. Somebody's celebrating already. It's important though, they're giving away autographs. Yeah, it was Edison Bramble again on a hard hit going down covering kickoff. This is a, an amazing football stadium. Bill Curry taking his beating today, but he'll take it like a gentleman. You know, he was president of the National Football League Players Association. And everybody wants to talk to him about the strike. He wants to talk college football now. And he's far gone. Strikes and unions and all that. Please pound. Tailback carries the ball for about a yard. I said Curry was in three Super Bowls, one with Green Bay and two with Baltimore. One he'd rather not talk about was the loss to the New York Jets. Well, we've got to come up with the 
player of the game. Bounds again. You know, a check to the scholarship fund. Each of today's participating schools is presented by Chevrolet in the name of our most valuable players from Georgia Tech. We're picking the defensive back, number 21, Sammy Brown, who really made some good hits and some clutch hits in the secondary. And we go with an offensive lineman, David Drexler, number 54. What a job of blocking of North Carolina he does. So those are the Chevy most valuable players of the game. Sammy Brown on defense and an offensive lineman, sort of unusual at times, for North Carolina. With three minutes and ten seconds to play, timeout, and the score is North Carolina 41 and Georgia Tech nothing. The score and the time. Georgia Tech's ball on their 27-yard line, third and one. Look at the yards rushing in this game. North Carolina came in here as the second-leading rushing defense in the country. They'll probably be first after today. They're already first on total defense. That's Cleve Bounds. Bounds twisting away. Breaks it at the 40. Comes over the 45, and he's out of bounds on his own 48-and-a-half-yard line. That play alone could be the difference between being number one and number two. I tell you. Cleve Pounds does just that. He pounds this North Carolina defense for the yardage himself. He gets some pretty good blocks up front, but then he makes it all on his own. Stripping a blocker, stripping one tackler, and then riding another one out of bounds. That's the longest gain. 22 yards scrimmage for Georgia Tech today. They have a first down in their 48-yard line. Fumble by the quarterback. Stu Rogers, he fell out of immediately. The clock keeps moving with two minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this game. 41 to nothing, North Carolina in command, about to win their third of the season against one loss. And the loss in the opening game, one point to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh may be getting upset today by West Virginia. We'll have more on that later. Second down, 10 and a half. Rodgers in a play-action pass. Fires it out. His receiver fell down and hit the turf. Good rush there by Ronnie Seitz. The receiver is Richard Salem, number 89, a four-string receiver. Third down, ten and a half. This fella and this fella. Curry, very calm today. He knows the job ahead of him. Incidentally, they've had some dramatic improvements in their facilities at Georgia Tech. In the field, new building called the Edge. And that's dropped. You know, it's all frustration right now. That's Mark Pike. Well, they all need just a little game action. That's it. The one thing, the big difference between the two clubs was depth. Georgia Tech not having it, North Carolina having it. And the one thing that Curry does not want to come away with is lots of injuries. So far, he's lost Quintero and Keesler as two wide receivers to injuries and Bobby Hodge at defensive end. He doesn't want to come out of this kind of a ball game with a long injury list because he doesn't have that much depth to work with in the first place. And Tom, I think LeVette was badly shaken up. He has some sore ribs. We haven't seen much of him in the second half. Ron Rice to punt. High spiral. This is Tim Morrison, the safety man. He watches it right on, bounding around into the end zone for the touchback. North Carolina's ball. They'll come out on their 20-yard line to put it in play, and uh, they're in the lead, 41-0. As you see on your screen, first in the nation in total defense coming into today, 169. They've allowed Georgia Tech 137. In rushing, they had allowed only 44 yards a game, and today they've held Tech to 40 yards rushing. So they're really maintaining status quo on their outstanding defensive statistics. Probably going to move up a little bit in their pass defense, too. They came in ranked number seven, giving up about 125 yards per game, and they've been pretty much able to contain any threat of the pass today that Georgia Tech has mounted. We're nearing a minute and a half to play. 
running it out now. Anderson on Ratliff. Bob Ratliff, a four-string tailback, has come into the lineup. And uh, Crum is down to third and four stringers now. <laughs> Somebody said, why would he run up over 60 points in Army? They had it down to the bottom end of the squad, and uh, still they were gathering points. Third down and three. This is Ratliff again. He cuts back and has the first down. He reaches the 40-yard line with less than a minute to go. 30 first downs in the game for North Carolina. Ratliff shows a little promise, too. He's got has reached down even deeper into that tailback situation to see a high-stepping tailback here, who, again, follows his wave of blockers, makes some good cuts, shows a lot of ability and power. Very smooth. That was a good move he made. First down, North Carolina on their 40. Black ticking away. Ratliff shows he could lower that head and burrow into the line. He ran into Mike Phillips, the nose guard. He's on the 42-yard line of North Carolina. Second down, eight with less than 30 seconds to go. In the third quarter, Navy 20, Duke nothing. Maybe not a big upset if Navy beat Duke, but by that score, yes. A tremendous upset. Too much depth, too much talent today for North Carolina against the gritty Georgia Tech squad. What was your impression of the North Carolina team, Tom Gatewood? Well, not just a lot of depth, but the return of Kelvin Bryant is going to mean a lot for North Carolina for the rest of the season. Psychological lift for him being able to play with pain. Psychological lift for the ball club because they know he's back for the rest of the season. And they got to see Greg Poole come back, too. He's a guy who's been out for three games. He made a big interception all the way down to the goal line. He's back. A lot of encouragement from some of their uh, unhealthy people. Of course, Elkins will still be out, and Burroughs is left for uh, the rest of the season. But the depth, uh, big factor, the psychological boost of Bryant coming back, that's the big story in the ballgame. And Tech trying to develop as much depth as they can by just getting some experience. They've got to get lots of games and plays under their belts, and they'll come, they'll come around. We told you earlier, why don't they enlarge the stadium here? We'll take one more shot of it as you see other scores. This field was left by the Keenan family as a grant with a provision that the stadium would not be higher than the beautiful trees that surround the stadium. And uh, the trees are still, if they put an upper deck in and the trees grew taller, when those trees grow taller again, then they'll add another upper deck and increase it. They could use about 70,000 here, 75,000, because uh, every game they uh, sell out here. Incidentally, you can come on this campus and not even know there's a football stadium here. It's completely surrounded by trees. I've always heard what a beautiful campus this is. I tell you, uh, they made a believer out of me. My first trip here is something. And they have something of a football team here, too. Final score, 41-0, North Carolina. And now, West Virginia and Pittsburgh are going at it. And let's go to Pittsburgh to play-by-play -by, -play by Keith Jackson. <laughs> 